We have two questions, if that's okay. I feel like one thing that's holding me back is that my desire for comfort is stronger than my desire for truth. Whenever good things are happening in my life, I fall deeply into ego and have no desire to remain as awareness. However, it's only when things are going bad that I start trying to escape the bad feeling with truth. Do you have any advice for this? I know that I will never see truth unless my desire for it is stronger than my desire for comfort. Two, for people who are suffering from depression and anxiety, do you think such things as antidepressants can help relax the body and create a more sustainable environment for awakening? I don't know about the awakening part, but from what I understand research, but I don't know how true this is because Western medicine is very crazy, is that um, it's got some good parts to it as well. <clears throat> um, but also some of the stuff I read and hear about, I don't know if I believe, but from what I understand is that when your brain stops, when you become depressed and your brain stops producing serotonin, it's very hard for you to activate it again. I think, I believe you can through thinking and through better lifestyle choices, but often they recommend that you have to go on antidepressants to kickstart your serotonin levels again. But I don't know about it too much. I think it's something you need to investigate and feel into your body. I'm certainly not opposed to it, but I'm not pro it. I'm, I don't know. And I think it's an individual choice and it's what you feel. Um, I don't think it helps or, or stops anything. Thanks for that question about antidepressants. What was your other question? Um, yeah, that's okay. So when you're ready to start seeking enlightenment or start seeking, seeking it for, for truth, then you will. And while you've got the desire for comfort, then you will, and that's okay. That's no biggie. It's just the way it is. That's okay. You don't need to beat yourself up or feel bad. It's just what's appearing. That's the destiny of that particular object or that particular body at the moment. And when it wants to be different, it will be different. And it's nothing to do with you. You can't make yourself want things differently. It's like who's writing those wants? Like uh, sometimes in my life, I know that I, if I behaved differently to the way I'm behaving, my life would be easier, but I can't force myself to behave differently or do things differently in certain moments. I can, in, I can inform myself, I can inform the instrument, the body of better ways to do those things, but I can't force it to behave that way when it comes to it. It behaves the way it does. And that's the karma of these bodies. And that's the way it is. And the best thing that can happen is total acceptance of the karma of these instruments. That they have their wants and desires and that's the way it's going to manifest in life. If you want comfort over truth, then that's what will manifest. That's the beauty of it in a way, is that it happens. Like what you, you get what you want. But just who is it that wants these things? And there is nobody there that wants them. They're impersonal wants that are rising, appearing as if they're personal. But you certainly get what you want. I really believe that what it is the human desires, the human gets. But you cannot control those desires. You can look at them and explore them, and that might change them and recondition them. But you can't really change it in the moment. You can't, you not even really, you just can't. If in that moment you've got an aversion to being around someone, you can't talk yourself out of that aversion. That's what's appearing. And you can, you could maybe f override the body, but internally you've got an aversion to being with them. And, um, and that's what appears. You can't suddenly say, I'm just going to, um, reprogram myself blah, 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 blah. oh okay my aversion towards you has gone if you get reactive to a certain person you can't you um you can't stop it maybe something in you stops it but it's just the way it is 
And then if you hit back with anger, then more than likely they're going to hit back with anger with you too. And in a way, you want that. You want reactivity because that's what's appearing. If you go deep enough into it, when on the human, when I was reconditioning myself, and I just would like to inform you, if I haven't informed you enough times, I, I always value myself on or I value my character on being as honest and open as it can do, but I am certainly not a perfectly conditioned person. Um, I have faults just like everybody else, and I don't think there's anybody that's a perfectly conditioned person. And I respond from patterns in my childhood, difficult patterns in my childhood, like um, um, Uh, giving you an example, of, I can't think of one now, but so, um, you know, with uh, this is one I've told people many times. It's, um, I was dyslexic and I had a very difficult time at school. I was always in trouble because I couldn't keep up with the other kids in my class and I couldn't remember how to spell things. Even if I'd spent more time learning it than the other kids, I still couldn't do it right, but I'd still end up in trouble. And I can have aversion to um, paperwork and I can have aversion to things that remind me of being in school in the education system and that aversion to it will bring those things towards me like in a way it's ironic now that I'm the teacher like I often am teaching people um, but those that will bring things towards me you know like um you get what you want and I I in some level I want to be dyslexic and I am and that that is real humility to see that in yourself like in some level I wanted to be dyslexic and I wanted to have those experiences that I had and that's really owning something, like really. And I and I respond out of difficult conditioning that came from dyslexia, being at school and having difficult interactions with people. And I respond out of that with people sometimes. And that, and that's the way it is. And that's the way it'll always be when you're acting from these bodies. You get this imagination that one day you'll become enlightened, and you'll never react from your past conditioning and you'll be this perfect human and everything will be everybody else's fault and when you're in an argument or a disagreement with someone you can say look i'm enlightened i don't act from my past conditioning anymore everything is your fault and i can take i take no responsibility if you have any reaction to the way i behave it's because of you i'm enlightened and i have perfect behavior that only comes from god in this moment and um, and isn't a result of any difficult things that I've had in the past. But it's not like that. You still behave like your character behaves. And my character had all these years in the education system, and it behaves from that in certain ways. It's it's a lot better, and it's a lot more aware of itself, and it's not reactive or traumatized like it was. But there's still this want to have difficulty around reading and writing and paperwork and and I get paperwork wrong and I I uh, pay the price for that like and and um, and you guys think when I say dyslexia it's not bad dyslexia I had very bad dyslexia so this is like you'll find this funny but this is my everyday. And it's amazing that um, they have computers that can help me function now. But um, so the other day, so I've seen Sanskrit, the word Sanskrit written so many times. I've been in this subject since I was 18 years old and I'm now 38. So that's 20, over 20 years. And I've, I've seen the word Sanskrit written so many times. And I was with my friend and I was typing onto, into the internet because I was trying to show them something in Sanskrit. And I put S-A-N-D script. So sand and script to look up Sanskrit. And it came up with um, these letters in sand, actually, in the sand that you find on the ocean. And my friend was laughing. And 
No matter how many times I see that word, it doesn't stay in my brain. I don't look at a word and think, ah, oh, that's, that's how you spell it. And um, that stays in my brain. It just doesn't. I can look at a word and I can even now go away and practice the word Sanskrit and practice it and then learn how to spell it. And then in a month's time, I'll have forgotten it. And then when somebody asks me how to spell Sanskrit, Again, I will be in the same situation, and um, and this is this is constant, like with really small words. And then I I really think if I stopped writing, I would stop being able to spell altogether. Like I can't; it just doesn't naturally come to me. And the same with speech; I forget how to say words. Like if I actually could remember all the words that I've learned over the years, I'd sound like an encyclopedia because I read, um, I educate myself loads, but. I can't remember the words. It's just part of what happens here in this instrument. And if I don't have a computer and I have to fill out a form or do something for someone handwritten, I cannot spell at all. And there is something in this instrument that wants that and wants that conflict with paper. And that might never change. And that might always be a conflict in this instrument. And I cannot reprogram it. It will be reprogrammed when life decides that will be reprogrammed. I can put effort and open myself up, which I have for years. I've, I did dyslexia training at school. I did edu extra education. So I can open myself up. I can open myself up to letting go of it, I can look and I can explore the dynamics around di dyslexia, but it will only change when it's willing to change. And maybe it has benefits that we cannot see because maybe my lack of attachment to words and the lack of attachment to think, which then goes into thinking, has actually helped me in this path. So maybe my want for it is actually a positive thing, but it does cause conflict in my life. Like it, um, it has caused lots of conflict. Like I don't have confidence to just write something to someone. Well, I don't really care actually if it's a personal person, but if it's um, for business then I often have to get someone to proofread it. So for my work, I used to um, employ somebody to check everything I did. Um, I still do that, but uh, I don't do it as much because uh, I do it some, sometimes. Yeah. For my um, other work, I definitely employ someone to go over it. So what was I talking about? I forgot what the question was. I have to go back to the question. So it's like uh, the human, there's no control over that level of things. Like it will happen when it happens. And just that total surrender to what these, these bodies are and that you don't need to be perfect. And you certainly don't need to be perfect. You can be difficult. You can have really difficult conditioning in this body but you are this presence, you are this, what is. It's got nothing to do, they're not relatable. Often I talk about reconditioning because the person needs to settle if it's always like, so when I was a kid, I used to get very, fall into, or when I was younger, I used to fall into hopelessness a lot with my dyslexia. And that doesn't really happen now, but that used to get me into a lot of mental seeking and suffering. And that, that fell away. I examined that and that fell away. But when it was happening, I was so lost in the wave of that suffering that I couldn't hear that you are this moment. Like it was not the person that hears it, but it was so noisy with me. 
that you are this. You are this. This which is experiencing. This which is. Which is everything and nothing. 